So today I'm with Weta. Weta, how old are you? I'm 39. Weta, how long have you been using blues? Uh, for four years. Mexico City. Yeah. Chilanga? Sí. <laughs> Chilanga, is that like, is that, yeah, is that a know. good, is that like good or bad when people say Chilanga? Well, no, it's, that's not what they do, but it's, I really believe what we should be calling it. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if it was derogatory, you know, like bad or anything, but that's what I've always heard people from the FR, like oh, Chilangos. Sure. I don't know why, what that means or anything, but. Well, yeah. it's back because people are born in different state of a, com of a country in Mexico and go and live in Mexico City. Those are Chilangos. Okay. But it mixes. So. Mixed. Mm -hmm. Got it. How long have you been here in the United States? Uh, it's going to be close to, we got here in the end of 99, so. Okay. Yeah. 25 years about? 24, 25? I've been here since I was three years old, so. 46 years. Yeah, so Long yeah. time, huh? I became a citizen seven years ago. So really? Yeah. That's awesome. Congratulations. Yeah. How was that? It was nice, but you know, sometimes you by yourself. Okay. Did you, uh, did you do good on the history test? Yeah. Yeah? I, I only did six questions. I passed them right away. Wow, that's yeah. cool. And so, you came to the United States searching for the, Mer the American dream, right? Yes, I guess we all do. We all do, yeah. right? And what happened? Um, in my life? Yeah. Well, I grew up in a Christian home. Yeah. And I got married young uh, with someone from church. And at the eight years of marriage, we could, I couldn't have kids. And they told him he was good. So next day he told me he didn't love me. He, he was going to leave me. So that kind of confuses me that, oh, we did the thing, I did the right thing to the church and shit, and I'm sorry, to the church, and I just started going to outside, you know, drinking, partying. And then I met uh, my ex husband, hey, I'm gonna do the opposite, you know, and then from church. And, well, he, he's the one that. Introduced you for so he was the opposite from the first husband. Yeah. The first husband's church and the second husband the opposite? I'm a barber, but I met him at, at the barber shop and he will, well, he would tell me like he will pinch who I was, you know what I mean? Like, because I, I was lost in a way. Still lost. But that made me want to keep talking to him, you know? But I confused that with, with love. And I still, I waited for him for five years in prison. And after he got out three months later, he started beating me up. And then he introduced me with, with a jale. And then if I wouldn't not open my mouth because he would blow the smoke of the blue and a kiss, he would beat me up. Plus, it took like two, two three kisses to blow it in my mouth to get hooked up. You became addicted to blues right away after two or three kisses yeah. that he would yeah. blow the smoke in your mouth. He would give me the pill or little by little, but it got to a point that when I already knew I needed it by myself, like I was, I was already done, you know? Too far gone? Yeah. Can you picture yourself living a normal life, like regaining control of your life and going back to what you used to have? I've been trying for the past year. For the past year? I try to, and I guess I went to Mexico and I was there with my family that I haven't seen for 32 years and, and I went all messed up and I tried to get clean, but I came back too soon. And, uh, Should have stayed there a little longer? Mm -hmm. And then, because my dad started talking to me, I let him take me whatever he wanted to. And still, I didn't like the clinic, but on the 22nd, I'm gonna go to another one. The 22nd of January, you're going to a treatment center here in Phoenix? Uh -huh. Yeah, it's called Copper Springs. Copper Springs in uh, Avondale. Mm -hmm. So, going back 
thing about here at treatment centers in the United States is you have the choice if you want to leave or not. Yeah. You know, they make it a little too easy for you to just stop. Yeah, in Mexico, and, it was with my family. It was love that made me not get mad and stuff. You know, for them, I gave me anything. But uh, for a day, I was already up. But I uh, ended up hallucinating because it's painful, you know? We don't want to go through the, through the pain of not smoking. Or, that's not what we're scared of, you know? Stop the smoking because of the pain we go through. Withdrawals? Withdrawals, yeah. What do withdrawals feel like for you? It's, it's, I'm good. It hurts your body. Like, you don't have control of it. I, I was hallucinating. Because the second day that I, the first day, my second, in, in terror to my second day, I was already hallucinating for the pain. How long were you a barber for? 19 years. 19 years? Good barber, huh? That's the only thing I could brag about. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, like a long client list of people searching you out. Yeah. Where'd I cut my hair? Where'd I, right? Yep. Something that I messed up. You messed up? I had my barber shop right here. You have your own barber shop? Yeah. How many years do you have your own barber shop? Six years. Six years? Thriving, doing good? Yeah. It was through the pandemic, but I still made it through. Wow. Mm -hmm. This can happen to anybody, huh? Addiction? I think so, but honestly, what it is is now that I know is we we keep ourselves a lot of stuff that go, we go through and we start blaming people because we don't want to face it. And when we start blaming people, we start getting a lot of anger, you know? It is that we don't want to face life sometimes. Like I could say, for example, with my second husband, like I couldn't believe that he did all that way. Hey, I waited for him, you know. He threw me, off, he told me off his life with other exes, and I mean, I, I'm not a perfect or same, but I wasn't like, even half of what they did to him, you know. I was loyal and everything, but what I was tough with my mom and dad, and he did that to me. Like I guess you know, I was trying to avoid and you know feel that feeling and, and numb, not feel nothing, so we won't cry. You know? You're a very emotional person. Yeah. You felt the betrayal from him because you were so faithful. Because uh, I stopped drinking less. Okay. I stopped smoking less. And like I said, this pill, what it does, is numbs your feelings. You don't wanna ignore it. You know. That's why we go through it. You have a hole in your heart. You have a pain that you're trying to numb. You don't want to feel that pain, so you use these exactly. pills to numb that yeah. pain, right? right? The emotion, the hurt, the loss. Mm -hmm. When will you be better? That's something that I don't know, but I, I want something soon. You I have two dogs that I love. Yeah. I want to get them back. You can't stay out here. No, after I get out from there, I can come back to this area. You know. You can't stay out here because it's so dangerous. The pills are dangerous. Yeah. Being out in the streets is dangerous. People take your stuff. People yeah. mess with you. People hurt you. Your family at home, they're going to feed you, they're going to take care of you, they're going to help you, they're going to... You and your dogs. There's no love out here. No, no. It's cold. Cold at night. It's hot in the summer. But that's addiction though, you know? Addiction has you out here, right? Yeah. It's like, now it's not what people did. It's like, sometimes it's hard to forget yourself. Yeah. You know? I never wanted to let down people, which was I, not even my dad, my mom. Right. But it's hard to forgive yourself that you look back and like you lose yourself, like who am I? And that's the hard part. It's good to, it's hard, to, it's easy to forgive other people, but it's been hard to forgive myself. You're, you keep punishing yourself yeah. for the, mistakes you've made in the past, you got to get over that, forgive yourself and move forward, regain control. You can't be out here too much longer because eventually you're going to get a bad pill that has a strength of yeah. 20 and, Because we're you know, looking for that the high and that we don't have no more, you know. Not good. Not good at all. Um, if your family sees this, your family in Mexico, or your, your friends, here in Phoenix, what message do you have for them? First of all, I apologize for they see me like this. 
but yeah, I love it. Like, I'm gonna do what it takes so they could know what I made up, but also like to love each other and never forget. And regardless of whatever people or family do to you, like it's not their fault, it's an us, you know what I mean? At the end, it's on us and our reaction. And I never touch the group. No matter who gave it to you, honestly. Well, uh, I'm going to say thank you very much for talking to me. I really appreciate you sharing your story. The whole purpose of this channel is prevention through awareness by you having the courage to share your story. Somebody's going to watch this and be like, you know what? Somebody offered me offers me booze, I'm going to say no. Somebody offers me anything, G, anything, I'm going to say no. It's not worth it. I don't want to lose everything, right? I lost everything. You lost my, everything. My house, my barbershop, my family. Four years without talking to my family, my nephews. Long time. Yeah. You lost everything. People say, no, you won't, you can control it. No, you can control the blue. What do you have left to lose? <laughs> Your life. Yeah. Which is, well, go to jail or down there? But I have faith in you, okay? I have faith that you'll overcome this, okay? So keep your head up. I believe in you. Stay safe out here. We'll talk soon, okay? Thank you.